A new school day begins in Southern Maryland as students arrive at Huntingdown Elementary. The heart of this Calvert County community, neatly nestled between the shorelines of the Chesapeake Bay and the Patuxent River. All around me right here. But class will be a little different for the fifth graders here today. This morning they start a two-day construction project. All right, good morning everyone. How's everybody doing today? Under the direction and watchful eye of David Sikorsky. You can start mixing concrete. Executive Director of the Coastal Conservation Association, Maryland. Crabs love eating small oysters. Together, they'll build pieces of an artificial reef. That's what I like to do. I drop the shovel there and just lift it up. Destined for nearby waters. What you don't want to do. Habitat today equals fish tomorrow, and that's good for everybody. Working with the students, we try and explain to them that they're helping to build the base of an ecosystem. Yep, you just want to scrape, you want to hear that scraping noise. Today's task, erecting molds. Mixing and pouring concrete around inflated rubber balls to create dome structures with Swiss cheese windows. Reef balls, man-made marine habitat, most importantly for the bay's diminished oyster population currently less than 1% of its historic highs due to pollution, disease, and over-harvest. It's all part of the school's environmental science program designed to get students outside, learning about nature found in their own backyard. All right, see if you can keep pushing that down there. A mission that dovetails nicely with Sikorsky's goals, centered around the region's recreational fishery. So our main focus is habitat and advocating for a healthier bay. Sikorsky has coordinated the construction and placement of about 1,500 reef balls throughout the Chesapeake Bay watershed during the last six years. The three-dimensionality of a natural oyster reef is what we're reproducing with a reef ball. So a juvenile oyster out in nature is looking for something hard, a hard substrate or shell, ideally. They grow on top of each other. That's how they build a three-dimensional reef. And that's ultimately what we've broken down over time. And because oysters are filter feeders cleaning the water of excess nutrients, they aren't the only beneficiaries of an artificial reef. By making the water more clear in shallow water areas, light can penetrate the sun and help grow underwater grasses. It also allows a place for things to hide. Fish start really small and they need a place to hide. We like them when they're big, but they have to get away from those big fish because it's a fish eat fish world out there. Topside, competition may not be so existential in the fifth grade. But this hands-on experience offers valuable lessons to last a lifetime. Hey, everybody take turns. You know, looking across their class, we're all different. We all come together in different ways, and that's how an oyster reef works. There's two it on the top. Okay. And the students get to work together in a team, make this structure that we can then teach them has a bigger purpose than just learning how to mix concrete and assemble something, right? It's going to be there into the future and be placed into the waterways. But first, the concrete must cure overnight. Meanwhile, a little further downriver, at Morgan State University's Patuxent Environmental and Aquatic Research Laboratory, aptly nicknamed Pearl, oyster family trees play a vital role in the reef ball program. Pearl's project began with locally harvested wild oysters. Now, bags of shellfish are separated by their genetic lineage. Researchers Brittany Wolf Bryant, Shivas Bandari, and Ming Lu select individual oysters to reproduce based on certain characteristics. I know they look like rocks, but they're a lot more interesting than just that. <laughs> the three most critical traits, fast growth, disease resistance, and the ability to survive low salinity, like the waters of the upper Chesapeake Bay. In nature, oysters release their reproductive cells into the open water. Egg and sperm connect by chance. But at Pearl, the team performs what's called a strip spawn, a lab procedure which makes mating much more precise. Having chosen the best of the brood, the researchers identify the biological sex. Female? Female? Yeah. Oh, wow, we're getting a lot of females. That's good. <laughs> and manually collect the reproductive cells, eggs, and sperm. 
We do this so we're able to control the genetics of what specific oyster we're spawning together. Fertilization takes place in a beaker. We are oyster matchmakers. We're basically choosing what males and females are breeding. The resulting larvae will be used to populate reef balls, and thanks to their valuable inherited traits, hopefully grow into mature shellfish at an oyster sanctuary like this one, situated just below St. Mary's College of Maryland. It is managed by David Sikorsky's friend and collaborator, Bob Lewis, executive director of the St. Mary's River Watershed Association. We took an area of approximately five acres in size that was 98% barren mud. There was virtually nothing living there. All of the oysters had been harvested. Today, 10 years later, there are over 40 million oysters living in that five acre area. And the water clarity is 400% better than it was before we started our project. A transformation due in large part to reef balls often stacked vertically to provide added three-dimensionality. The site's growth has been both planned and organic. There are other filter feeders living there, mussels and barnacles and grass shrimp. It's an ideal place for small fishes to grow up and find protection. Boating with Bob today, David can admire the accomplishments of their partnership and scout locations for future additions like the reef balls, currently curing at Huntingtown Elementary. So where are they gonna go? Do you have an idea yet? Probably right under us now, in between these two higher ones, and we'll build a row in, uh, underneath it, just one high. Yeah. So I'd say we have plenty more space and a lot of work to do together, huh? Oh, yeah. That's because, once again, with assistance and guidance from David. There it goes. The fifth graders at Huntingtown Elementary School carefully dismantle the molds they built the day before and reveal their new creations. An unveiling which wraps the students and their instructor in pride and purpose. I think it's really good. I think we did really good on the project. We did. I really like it. And now this will go in the bay and help oysters. You know, I just want to like, see it in five years to see what it looks like. I'm totally covered in oysters. Working with those kids, you know, I say I have the best job in the world. I like it. Having them be aware that something in the Chesapeake Bay that they've helped create is making it better, I think increases the likelihood that they're going to be more aware of what's happening out there, even if they never see it again.